<laughs> you know, sometimes it's pretty amazing what God can do when we let him. I mean, yesterday, to give you an example, I felt like it was the end of the world that God had flown the coop, that he had left me behind, that somehow I just didn't feel like a Christian, you know, that, man, it was just so empty, a uh, feeling of distancing, and it was like, oh, no, have I crossed that line? And through devotionals and through studying his word, and sometimes just sitting alone and waiting on the Lord, you find that the feelings don't change necessarily, but after this point of time, like overnight, joy comes in the morning by our renewing of our relationship with the Father, that God said and promised us that though sorrow may endure for but an evening, joy cometh in the morning. And sometimes it takes some kind of God working in the heavens on our behalf, which we don't know anything about, really. We know a little bit. We've had a little insight in the book of Revelation, but we're really not told that much. But it takes God working in the heavens to accomplish his purposes for us, knowing full well that he's with us, that our feelings can be brought back into line with his purposes and his will. Because God never intended for you to be a roller coaster ride, sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes all around. Now, God actually intended that we should be bearers of his message to the world, that God loves us, that God is for us, that God has designed a reason for the things that you're going through, that irregardless of what you think you understand about the purposes of life and your job or your career, God has something better in store, which may not be what you think of as better, because a lot of times people make that mistake. They think, oh, well, I'm a vice president. Maybe I can be president. Or I'm a football star. Maybe I can be a rock star. What about a missionary? You see, sometimes it's not about what you get as much as it is about what you do. Because even in my distress, when I called upon the name of the Lord, I didn't feel that, oh, you know, that you feel with God. I still went about the things of God that God said to do, that I should do. Because as you are faithful to him, he is faithful to reward you for your service to him. And he will bless you. He will cause you to come to a place of blessing that after trudging through the deserts, you'll come to the waters of Meribah. After going through this long, torturous climb on the mountaintop, you'll find the glacier waters. That at some point in time when you rest and you get to the top of your tri trials and travails, you'll look around and say, wow, look at the view. Because your perspective will have changed after having gone through the pain. And you'll gain what God intended for you in going through that which you went through. I know for myself, I don't ask why anymore. You know, I just thank God for what I have been through, that he has allowed me to be confident in the things I will go through, and that I can trust him for the things that I endure, even in each day, as I face each day with him. Maybe you too are going through something, you know, that you just passed through and you you said, Whew, that was a close one. <laughs> or maybe you fell down and you blew it, you know, completely. You know, and you went, oh, man, can we start again? Yes, you can. Turn to the Lord, accept his mercy and forgiveness, and walk with the Lord. Because Jesus isn't about condemning you. He's about confirming you and conforming you into his image by way of the Holy Spirit causing you to come into a place of blessing for him. Not because you're supposed to take it in and ah, relax and sit back and go, oh, give me more. Like a little baby that needs its diapers changed and a bottle stuck in his mouth. 
but rather you're meant to be blessing others with that which comes down into you and gushes out to others. That you are a joyful witness, that you are a peaceful servant, that you are a loving son and daughter of God, children of the Most High, and that you have the unity of the faith that comes to believers who are known by their love for one another. Internal blessings show externally. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the flesh and newness has come. 1 Corinthians 5.17 When God baptized me in the Holy Ghost, I felt like he had filled me with liquid love. He did something on the inside of me, and it showed on the outside of me. Internal changes last and keep showing up in everything we do. That is why we, that is why you can't really be a closet Christian. If you are saved, it will show to others. If you say you are saved, but nothing has changed in your life, something is wrong. When Jesus comes to live in you, he will get involved with how you live and how you look at life to make you more like him. Welcome any changes he needs to make in you today. God never intended that the world should be condemned by you. God never intended that the world should be lost because of some message that you gave. As a matter of fact, God intended not that you should have some wonderful, magnificent ministry where you could say, Oh, in the name of the Lord, I'm going to do it. But rather, God wanted to change you. That when people saw what you had been yesterday and saw what you are today and how much better you are tomorrow, they would say, hey, you know, there's something different about that person. You know, I think I kind of like what happened to him. You know, he used to be such a jerk. Now, it's kind of peaceable, you know, kind of loving, kind of forgiving, even extends mercy and doesn't have to always witness, but sometimes just shares and helps me and cares when no one else will. I don't know about you, it seems to me that's kind of like what Jesus did, you know? He met people where they were at. He knew their suffering. He identified with their need. He met them and fulfilled the physical part that they, they might have wanted. And then likewise sometimes shared that deep emotional need that they had and was there for them. When somebody comes into contact with you, what will they remember about you? Is it that you witnessed to them or you said, Jesus, 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 and you, you kind of hit them left and right? Or will they feel as though there was something caring about you, something tender, Something that made them want what you have. If you got into that place, then God can use you. Because if you're doing anything else but sharing the love of God, you're not accomplishing God's purpose for humanity. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if God would give his son then how much more so would he give for that person who needs to be saved today?